the person we hear is one John Edusei as what? The counsel for the Owo family. He's the only person I have Googled at the uh, Ghana Bar uh, Association. This Association website. And he's not part of the councils in the good standing at the bar. But he is the one who had been talking all this while. And I can tell you for a fact that the beginning communique says that it is the Owu family of Osu. There is no Owu family in Osu for the first place. Now, this Owu they are talking about had lived in Osu during the Katamanso War era in 1826. He died in 1867. This Owu was an interpreter between the indigenous people and then the colonial masters. So in 1839, the colonial masters came out with a, a tax, pool tax ordinance. In Ghana, we call it uh, Mansamo To Tro Kekpain Parajon. What does it mean? Yes. Pool tax ordinance. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. It is a uh, Tro Kekpain Parajon. How would I call it in English? It's about five pesos. Okay. Uh, tro is three pesos. And then pine pano is two pesos. So five pesos per head. And the indigenous people decided not to pay. And it became a banter. It culminated in the bombardment of the coastal towns in 1854. This Neo was a betrayer. So he was ostracized from Osu. So uh, is this what the documented fact or maybe oh, it's a, a documented fact it's, it's I see, here I, I see a, a big uh, um, a, a book there uh, so are you yes suggesting? it's documented okay, so you, fact. You go, it's here. go ahead and tell uh, yes. the story uh, it's here it's here in all what i'm saying are not folklore it is a documented fact so this new who went to sojourn with the Bese manche and he was given a place near the achimota forest to farm that is how come he came into this picture. So when Ni Owu died, he has no child. So he has no child succeeding him. But when this acquisition was advertised by the colonial government in 1921, in fact, it started in 1919, after the, second, after the First World War, at the end of the First World War, mm -hmm. when this acquisition started, so 1919, when it was advertised, a group of people who are children of Ni Owu's sisters, they constitute themselves as the Owu family. Mm -hmm. And they presented a claim. So like I'm saying, if you look at this document that I'm having, mm -hmm. this document, this is, the, this is everything about the Achimota for going, uh, acquisition, the Prince of Wales calling. So, so when then, all these things, all these things were happening, especially when you give us the history about the colonial masters advertising and so on and so forth, I presume that the traditional authorities or the the owners of the land were alive. Yes. Uh, and how come they were missing? And so this four thousand pounds ended up. With the old no what? We, okay. we, uh, so okay. we, we we were not missing we were no we went to court they at are, that time they, oh yes at that time their claims were dismissed i have a judgment here there was a judgment there was a judgment here their claims were dismissed but you go ahead uh, uh, their, uh, claim, their uh, claims uh, were I'll dismissed come to you, sir. Okay. so so their claims were dismissed and the compensation that we were to be given in fact, when they came in, because they farmed there, some monies were paid. So Bese Manche ordered him to see the colonial government and collect some amount from them. He proposed 4,000, but he was given 2,000 according to the document. And he went and reported to Bese Manche with only 100 pounds instead of the 2,000 pounds that was given him. He had never there is no document that the Owus received 4,000 pounds 
for, from the but Korean government. But I have government. seen uh, a document that has been pulled out with comments suggesting that a specific amount was paid in the sum of £4,000. It is never true. That was his request to the colonial masters that that amount ought to be paid for the parcel of land. Usually that's what happens in acquisitions. Every claimant will do an estimate. So that was always estimate to the colonial masters, but not what was paid to him.